We need to bring the issue of mental health out into the sunlight, out of the darkness, out of the closet. Deal with it. Treat people, have centers where people can get necessary help. John Lewis. Across the globe, hundreds of millions of people are suffering from some form of mental health issue, ranging anywhere from depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder, to autism and Down syndrome. Oftentimes, these people feel completely alone, muted in the shadows, surrounded by darkness with nothing and no one in sight. Let us bring light to these individuals through discussion and compassion, by listening to their stories and sharing in the discussion. where it all started. What depression is to me is just feeling alone and sad for a prolonged period of time and feeling like nobody's there for you when really everybody's there and I just you just feel alone. I feel like my depression started in elementary school. It was a very sad time for me. I was really big and overweight and uh, people didn't know how bad words can really affect people. I just feel like depression is, it just feels like you're drowning in a way. Your body knows it shouldn't take, take in the toxic stuff that you're receiving, but your body autom it automatically defends itself until the very last second before you pass out. It's just terrible to see so many people deal with it and to see how people can think about ending everything because all they can feel is sadness and feel like they're alone and it just, it gets to me. I don't, I don't understand why depression is a thing and why sadness has to be in this world, but it's just a part of life and we all have to live with it. Louise Penny once said, when someone stabs you, it's not your fault that you feel pain. Those affected by mental health issues are not always born to misfortunes that they bear. Oftentimes, others inflict pain on us that is out of our control. Never blame yourself and never forget that you aren't alone. One in three people have experienced harassment of some form. Many never speak up. They remain hidden in the darkness, silenced by their own choices. Take a piece of paper and crumble it up. Now try to unfold it. You will never get that same piece of paper back again, no matter how hard you try to fix it. Now think of it that way. You can never take your words and actions back you acquire. Scars last forever. Make sure to pay attention to warning signs before it's too late. Some signs may be changes in eating habits, loss of interest in daily activity, and self-destructive behavior. Speak up before it's too late. Letting others shine their light gives you enough illumination to light your own. MD. When we let other people into our lives and allow them to shine their light, only then do we start to see change for the better. Mental health problems of any kind should never be dealt with alone. We can recover by surrounding ourselves with people who care, those like us, and those who just want to see others living their best lives. Reaching out is the key step to tackling these issues and winning this battle. Mental health issues can be seen in anyone, but it's crucial to know the importance of reaching out. We talked to Andy Tobar about his experience with bullying and how reaching out changed his life. Tell me a little bit about your story and a little bit about your experience. I was very young and uh, I used to get bullied in elementary. I got bullied for six years all the way to first grade of sixth grade. And I really didn't tell my mom or dad about it because I just wanted to keep it alone. So did you ever reach out and if you did, like how did that impact you? I reached out to my mom and I told her mom and like told her I'm getting bullied out at school. 
then she told me like, why don't you tell your teacher about it that you're getting picked on? And I was like, I don't know. I think I, 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 I told her like, I just made up a lie. I told her, I, I, the teachers don't like me like that. And, but then I, I told one of my teachers, one of my old teachers, I was like, hey, I'm getting picked on at school and I don't know what to do. What should I do? Then he started giving me advice. He's like, if they keep bullying you, just always come to us. You see on the news, people are struggling. Like some kids don't know what to do. Some kids commit suicide. And I, not, I was like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be, I want to be on the news. So think about someone else that might be in a situation similar to yours. What would your advice be as far as reaching out goes? My, my advice would be always talk to a teacher or a counselor or, or a really close friend that you really trust with all your heart and tell them about it. And, and I know from my experience, they will give you advice and they will help you through it. And if it's deep, you can always tell like a, a, an adult you really trust and just trust them and they're gonna give you advice and give you help all you need. We've seen what millions and millions of people around the globe live with every day. The hardships and troubles we've seen faced have been great, but that doesn't mean that there isn't hope. Searching for solutions allows us to bring about that hope. Hope for a better change, a brighter future. We see that success around us every day when individuals overcome their circumstances and learn to thrive. We know that social and mental struggles could happen to the best of us. But we also discovered that it's never impossible to overcome it and find happiness. I was fortunate enough to sit down with Pathway student Bryce Gibson and hear his journey from struggle to success. This is his story. Now a junior, Bryce succeeds in both school and both of his jobs, one of them being at the 8th grade center and the other at Texas Roadhouse. Although he currently excels in school and thrives alongside his friends, Bryce admits that it always hasn't been an easy path for him. And has there been anything in the past that you struggled with, maybe? Uh, school. Mm. Has the problems been bullies in the past, maybe? Yeah, some. Uh, when my friend, like, threw a temperature at me. Fortunately, Bryce was able to conquer the issue, as he told us how he dealt with the situation peacefully in his own way. Well, just walking away and stuff like that. Walk away from the problem. Along with solving the problem, Bryce found several activities that he enjoys spending his time participating in. Uh, being outside, feeling all the bleeds. When you were playing the, the games and doing the shot put, how was that? It was, the shot put was hard. How about the relay race? How was that? I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it, but it was a game. Although he greatly enjoys the outdoors and several other activities, Bryce says one of the most influential factors in his life have been his family and friends. Trayvon, Erica, Kayla, and that's it. What would you like to say to your friends? The good friends. Thanks once again, Bryce, and keep going strong. Eliza Vandewali, BD TV. Where we were once scared and alone, enveloped in darkness, crippled by forces out of our control. We now stand illuminated by the lights of others and by our own lights. Those with depression who deal with suicide, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and people who love and care and support their fellow man in each of his own battles. We all stand together, hand in hand. We know that pain is never permanent and that we can overcome anything. Our lives are what we make of them. Reach out to give or get help and create a life that's worth living. Because each and every one of us we can be